This episode is brought to you by Trump 2016. Trump 2016, making America greatly exceed the world's expectations on how insane we can be as a country. Again. My word, you elected the Terminator as governor? That's crazy. Crazy. I'll show you crazy, motherfucker. Somebody give me Donald Trump. Release the Trumpin. Trumpin. Is that? No. No. Um, hey, times like this is when I like to remind people that, you know, Richard Petty once ran for political office in my home state of North Carolina. And North Car- Carolinians resoundingly said, no, or now, um, as many of us tend to do. Uh, for those of you who don't know, don't know who Richard Petty is, uh, he's a famous NASCAR driver. If you don't know what NASCAR is, um, yeah, just you gotta look it up, man. You're on the internet. I can't tell you everything. I want to do combustion reactions in a few minutes. Um, but um, if sci- NASCAR was Scientology, which if you've spend enough time in North Carolina, you know that that's really not that bad of an analogy. Um, But if NASCAR was Scientology, Richard Petty would be our Tom Cruise. Uh, He wasn't even running for governor. He just something like Secretary of State, I think. And even then, I mean, we just went, no, Richard, no, don't. Just go back to your NASCAR thing and just we love you, but no, you can't run our country for us. Um, uh, actually, I should, as of this recording, um, North Carolina's primary isn't hasn't happened yet. It's actually next week, and they they they're probably gonna vote for Trump. Because um, really, I mean, what was what's second choice? Uh, Mr. Rogers' evil twin is that? Hello, boys and girls. Anyway. Uh, Combustion reactions. So, speaking of things burning, there should be a Trump combustion analogy in there somewhere, but I didn't plan ahead well enough to do it. So, screw it. Combustion reactions. Um, uh, A combustion reaction is basically any reaction where something is reacting with oxygen basically something plus oxygen is a combustion reaction and there are lots of combustion reactions that you're already familiar with if you didn't even if you didn't know that they were combustion reactions like for example many of you um, heat your home with natural gas natural gas is methane mostly and to burn that methane to heat your home you have to uh, burn it, react it with oxygen, and the products of that reaction are carbon dioxide and water. Uh, for smokers, um, uh, a lighter fluid is butane. So when you light your lighter, flick your bic, as we used to say you know, 20 years ago, um, yeah, that's the combustion reaction with oxygen, and your products are, again, CO2 and water. So, notice a couple of things about these two examples. First, they both involve something burning, which pretty much, that's what a combustion reaction is. Things that burn are usually undergoing a combustion reaction, which if you remember the fire triangle or tripod, whatever the thing that I believe is outdated now, but who cares. Um, One of the three things that they used to say you needed for a fire is oxygen, as well as, you know, heat and I think combustible material. Uh, Again, you're online. You can look it up. Um, But the other thing is um, both of these reactions have the same two products, carbon dioxide and water. That's because unlike other reactions you learn about this time, they're not things like double displacements where you're just swapping pairs or swapping ions like we do a lot in Gen Chem. Uh, The products of the combustion reaction are solely determined by what elements are in that reactant. So, for example, um, carbon. Uh, Anytime carbon undergoes combustion, it's going to form carbon dioxide. Ideally, I mean, you might, going back to the uh, methane example, uh, 
if you don't take care of your uh, furnace, you might get what we call incomplete combustion. And instead of getting carbon dioxide, you get carbon monoxide, uh, which is bad for you. Um, so that's why they tell you to watch out, you know, make sure you, your furnace is maintained properly so that kind of stuff doesn't happen. But we're not worried about incomplete stuff. We're, working, we're, we're worried about ideal conditions. So ideally when carbon undergoes combustion, you get carbon dioxide. And anytime hydrogen is involved in a combustion reaction, you get water. And in fact, any time a nonmetal is going to be part of a combustion reaction, it's going to form its nonmetal oxide. You know, for example, uh, phosphorus, um, when it undergoes combustion, and if you uh, search for this thing called white phosphorus, it's one of the forms of phosphorus, you can actually see um, some of the neat little things that happen when it undergoes combustion. Um, but it undergoes a combustion reaction to give you a phosphorus oxide, usually tetraphos tetraphosphorus decoxide. Uh, remember back when we talked about first introduced uh, compounds and covalent compounds, you know, two nonmetals can usually form several different ways. So at this stage in your chemical education, you're probably not responsible for knowing um, a lot of uh, main, the major nonmetal oxides, uh, with the exceptions of carbon and hydrogen because those two are so common uh, that yeah, you kinda, you should know what they are. But for any other non-metal, it's usually, you know, just, you're just gonna form one of its non-metal oxides. <coughs> so, um, oh yeah, An ex one exception to this though, I forgot, forgot what was coming up, and I have notes, uh, but I'm not looking at them. I'm just pulling them up every now and then. But anyway, um, a sort of exception to this sort of kind of is when the nonmetal is oxygen. So if you look at the combustion of sugar, which um, is, you know, the reaction, this is basically the respiration reaction and the coefficients are six, six, and six, probably means nothing. But anyway, um, Again, carbon's going to go on to form carbon dioxide. Hydrogen's going to form water. Um, but oxygen doesn't give you anything special. That oxygen just goes to, goes to form all the other oxides that are forming as products. Um, besides, I mean, what would the oxygen's oxide be? Oxygen? No. Um, so, yeah. It's sort of kind of an exception, but not really a tough exception to remember, I don't think. So those are non-metals, but with metals, when they undergo combustion, pretty much the same thing happens. It'll combine with oxygen to give you its metal oxide. So for example, those um, sparklers that you sometimes use um, for holidays, like you know the 4th of July here in the States, um, that's mainly just a little ground up magnesium to and made into some corn dog looking thing All right. um, and that'll that can burn to f give you um, in a combustion reaction to give you magnesium oxide as its product so notice in all of these cases um, it's just each element in that compound it's just combining with oxygen to give you its main oxide and for carbon, it's going to be carbon dioxide. Hydrogen, again, is going to be water. Um, uh, any other non-metal, it'll be a non-metal oxide. And if it's a metal, it'll be a metal oxide. So, um, for example, uh, let's just look at the combustion of C6H12, whatever it may be. It's probably a few different things, which I'll talk about a little bit more in the semester. So if it undergoes combustion, that means that that guy is reacting with O2. To predict, see what the products are, uh, again, you just look at the formula. The carbon is going to form CO2. And notice it doesn't matter how many carbons are present, it's always going to be CO2. Right. 
Uh, don't worry about the fact that you have six carbons on one side and one on the other. That's balancing, and you can't worry about balancing until you have the entire equation. So don't worry about it yet. Uh, hydrogen, again, no matter how many hydrogens you see, it's going to form water. Those are the only two things in our combusting substance, so now we have a complete equation, so now you can go back and balance it. Now let's look at the combustion of potassium hydride. So again, combustion means that that thing, whatever thing is given to you, in this case it's KH, is reacting with O2. Now as far as what the products are, uh, potassium is going to give you potassium hydro potassium oxide, excuse me. But again, remember the stuff that you probably learned a chapter or two ago about um, ionic compounds. Potassium is going to form a plus one ion. Oxygen is going to form a negative two ion. So when these two ions come together to give you potassium oxide, remember the crossover rule, it's going to be a two to one ratio. Again, don't worry about how many is on each side. That's balancing, and we won't worry about that for another minute or two. We still have one more element to worry about, and that's hydrogen. But again, hydrogen is going to give you water. And those are the only two elements in our co compound, so we should be done as far as products. Now we can go back and balance it, which is just a two in front of the KH. Finally, let's look at the combustion of c 2 h 6 O, uh, which uh, is a common molecular formula for ethanol or ethyl alcohol or drinking alcohol. Uh, although it could be something else. Again, we talk about that later on in the semester. Uh, this thing called isomers. But that's later. For now, it's undergoing combustion, so that thing will react with O2, because that's how we define combustion. To predict the products, again, the carbon, no matter how many carbons you see, is going to give you CO2. Hydrogen, no matter how many hydrogens you see, is going to give you water. There's also oxygen present, but remember, oxygen doesn't give us anything special. That just gets worked into all the other, into the oxygen of the CO2 and water and whatever other oxides are forming. So again, it looks like we're done. Now we can go back and worry about the fact that we have a different number of carbons and hydrogens and also oxygens, so we can go back and balance it. Okay, so remember, if I didn't say it enough, no matter how many carbons you see, it's always CO2. Hydrogen's always water. Uh, any other non-metal, it's, it's going to be its non-metal oxide, and probably this early in your in your education you're not having to worry about what their main oxides are um, maybe I don't know for metals they form a metal oxide and if it's a constant charge element uh, like we discussed a couple chapters earlier like potassium you can predict what or magnesium you can predict what those um what that product will be just doing the crossover method stuff that we talked about before all right, so that'll be it for today. I will see you guys maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. Hmm.